everybody. I'm hoping you can see what's behind the glasses. People ask about my glasses, and I'm like, here you go. Got all of this reflect from this ring light, but it's the lights I got. But, yeah, most of the time, my eyeshadow looks are meant for somebody who's walking around with cheaters on. So I don't get, plus the hooded eyes, I don't really get and or do things like the, the really elaborate cut crease stuff. I just... It's not entirely worth it to do it. The other thing is with the glasses on, I've been known to be able to get enough mascara on that I'm leaving it on the back of the lenses. So false lashes are not necessarily where I'm going to go because there's some that I get from AOA Studio. It's called the S. Two. It's a tiny, tiny little wispy, and it's real short. I can get away with those behind the lenses. Not much of anything else. Anyway, I did a tutorial on this look right here because I had done it in another video, and hadn't done the tutorial during that video, and people said, could you please? So, here it is. I went this way. Hello. How are you? Yes, I've got my glasses on. Yes, you're going to see some reflection. Sorry. It's like, I keep, people keep asking about my glasses because I always talk about not being able to see so I'm going yep there they are the reason I take them off is this reflection in here because I've got a ring light directly in front of me so plus you can't really put the makeup on with your glasses on your face but it also makes a difference as to how I do my makeup because it's going to be behind glasses because I don't got the money to do the uh, contacts thing currently. They're not cheap. Anyway, as I should have said in the intro, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on a look I did back a couple of vids ago. That I'd already had my makeup on when I did the rest of the video and a couple three people said hey how did you do that so today we will be answering the hey how did you do that all right this is my favorite base like usual it's the AOA studio white concealer I love it it works well it's a good clear base so and it's a dollar it dries down pretty quickly it's not sticky sticky it will grab your color and hold it but it's not like wet 
It's not like goopy. Goopy bugs me. Yes, can you see all the wrinkles with all that white stuff? Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, the palette I used for this particular one is called Cageling. And it's by a company called Arianus. Arianus is the Greek term for Furies. It's a really pretty palette, okay? have no idea about the company other than what I just said because there is no other information. And when this came in, everything on both the unit card and the back of the palette is in Chinese. So, with that... I did what I have a habit of doing anyway, which is putting it on my skin in places other than my eye to kind of test it out a bit before I put it on my eyes. And I leave it on there for as long as possible, like 12 hours or so. And then... If I don't have a reaction, I figure I'm good. Now, Cageling has all these lovely colors, and they've got them named for birds. The brown up here in the top corner, this one, is called Sparrow. And I just started by tapping that in right here. Now, when you look at it in the pan, it looks kind of chocolate. When you start getting it over here on your eye, it's still kind of chocolate, but it's got kind of a pink cast to it. Yes, occasionally I will be sticking my nose on the mirror. It's how this works. Because if I can't see what I'm doing, it gets really annoying. And what I'm doing is trying to kind of match shapes. It will not be perfect. Dust the brush off a little bit. And I'm going to go down here to this yellow called Canary. And I kind of started buffing out here just a little bit. And then came up around the top. So that the yellow picked up some of that brown. And just started working across. Now, I saw this maneuver on, it was either a commercial on YouTube or it was on Instagram, where they started with a darker shade and then grabbed up something else and started doing this to create the outer corner shape. And I thought it looked interesting and intriguing. So I said, self, let self try this. So self tried it. I'm not sure if I like it, but it's definitely 
an interesting way to get started. It gives you an interesting gradient as you get closer to the inner corner and an interesting blend right there at the outer corner. Like I said, I'm not sure I like it as a technique, but I'll probably play with it a bit for a while, just because. Now, time to get a different brush. Because in that, the center, they've got a kind of a coppery glitter called Shrike. And I'm going to put that in here. The first time I did it, I used the linnet, and the linnet, it's got a little bit of a spark to it, but it just, it was really kind of dusty, so I'm going to leave that one out this time, because I ended up covering it with the Shrike anyway. Picking it up, picking it up. And then because it's a glitter... I'm going to wet it down just a little bit with some setting spray. One of the local stores was doing a sale on the cover girl lock it up in one of the older packaging formats. And I said, yes, thank you. one of my favorite scents on top of it. It's cucumber. Don't forget to dry off your ferrule so you don't get extra fluid that runs down into your pan and you don't get extra fluid that runs down inside the ferrule and loosens up your bristles because it can. Think about some of the ingredients in setting spray. And then think about the glue that's down inside that ferrule that keeps your bristles from falling out. Do you really want to lose your favorite brushes because you forgot and just let the fluids run in and stay? There's a reason they advise you if when you wash your brushes to hang them upside down so the fluid runs away. Because you really don't want all that extra fluid in there soaking the glue that's holding your bristles. Yes, my hands are being a little crampy and creaky today, so I am not necessarily holding the brush perfectly. And it's not just because I'm exercising this hand. Both hands are being kind of crampy, so. Now, wearing glasses is one of the reasons that I don't often 
use false lashes because the false lashes bang right up against the lenses and it's really annoying Alrighty, yes, we had a little bit of jumpy, broke up editing going on because the grand girl dropped a tray of eggs and Poppy Jim jumped up to go help clean up. So, he, we just heard something go kerbushed. So he like leapt up and went running and left the door hanging open and I'm like, okay, let me shut this down and go reset a few things. Anyway, glitter glue. No, I am not going to cut the crease. It's just overlapping a little. With my hooded eyes, I have pretty much, I've tried it. I've tried to do the cut crease thing. And every time I try to do the cut crease thing, it is just a horror because my eyes are so hooded. Anyway, this shimmer right up here in the top called Swan is going on that inside corner on top of the glitter glue now this kind of stuff you could do this with your finger or with a brush or whatever you know it's like pick a pick a poison But, I'm putting this in the corner, and I really like this formula. It's not pressed glitter. It's an actual glitter and shadow, which I think is gorgeous got kind of a champagne -y pink thing going on and then I put just a little bit of it up in here without necessarily putting the glitter glue on I just kind of like brush it over no I haven't done my eyebrows yet I'm not that worried I put this down again put this brush down get my little cream brush I was using a little more glitter glue put the lid back on the glitter glue last thing you want is your glitter glue turning into a solid rock because then you can't use it Yeah, see, I let it. I let the glitter glue overlap onto the other colors just a little bit, but I don't get all cut creasy kind of thing. Pick up the swan and just kind of tap it on top of that glitter glue. Now the glitter glue I'm using is fairly inexpensive stuff. I got it off of AliExpress. However, I have seen it on Amazon and I have seen other people using it. 
So, you know, and when I did the usual thing of testing it out on bare skin first, I didn't have any problem with it. So I just kept going. I've been using it along with a few others that have come in like Ipsy bags and whatever ever since. And it's Handayan is the name currently on this one. But it's just, it's got kind of a hologram label on the tube. A little bit of kind of pale tan. And it holds my glitter. Now, I will be back in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go put some face on and put my eyebrows on and then I will come back and finish this up. But so far you can see what I've done. I like keeping things simple. Yeah, once in a while I get absolutely nuts and put all kinds of colors on and and layer stuff and go wild. Not so much today. But this definitely fits fall. It really does. And this is one of my subtles. Alrighty, I've gotten that far. I've gotten what I did since this is not the only video I'm doing today and I didn't want to just slather on bunches and bunches and bunches of, of foundation is I used some of my Maybelline Age Rewind dark circle eraser and I didn't erase the dark circles I didn't put it under my eyes. I put it where the red parts were. Here and here and here and down my nose and that kind of stuff. And then I took my Maybelline loose powder and just powdered the heck out of my face. I read an article recently that I eventually am going to turn into a video where there's 15 things they tell you not to do if you happen to be 50 plus. I sneered at most of them. And one of them is they tell you to get rid of your powder. Okay? Get rid of your powder. Unless you want to use it to brush into your eyelashes to thicken them. And I'm going, oh heck no. Uh-uh. That foolishness is not working. It just, no. <laughs> anyway. What I do next on this one is I take just a little bit of that original brown and come right under part of the way over just like that and keep it pretty tight to the lash line not perfect. It doesn't have to be all the way up. And just a, a single tiny line. And then I pick up that yellow again. And just kind of work it along. Just to kind of tie everybody together.
little bit of a line. This is out of the Ipsy bag. This is the Betty Boot line. Ooh, look at that tip. That is a beautiful tip. This is that, that Charlotte Tilbury mascara that I wanted to give away. And it's great stuff. It really is. But I can guarantee you I'm not buying a new one when this runs out. I love the formula. I'm kind of a fan of the brush. But Charlotte Tilbury is a bit out of my normal budget range. The palette I'm working with today I picked up from Amazon for 11 bucks. So, yeah. I get what I can get. Kind of like the only Tasha Denona that I've got is one that I won in a giveaway. <laughs> and it's one of the minis. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the formula. I like the colors. I like the color payoff. Buy another one? No. Especially not at full price. Alright. Got a little bit of bronzer on already, which is AOA Studio. That's their paler rainbow block. I think it's called um, Moonbeam. I don't remember. They've got a this one and then a darker one. And then I've got my Pixie blush in Whisper Pink. But I'm going to just kind of sneak on there. They call it Whisper Pink. I look at it and go Old Rose or Dusty Rose. Which is actually one of my favorite colors. And not just because it looks good on me. And then... Excuse me. I've got my Nomad Kiss of Sun Highlighter Balmoral Beach that came in the most recent Ipsy. It's another one of those kind of champagne pinky things. 
but it's really, really pale. It doesn't go on blinding, which is just fine by me some days. Some days I just want a little glow. And I've got plenty of other highlighters like the Unicorn and the Mermaid and I've got an Ofra that's one of the ones that Nikki Tutorials put together. And if I really want to blind somebody, I've got those. Now, I'm going to do something that I t keep telling people I don't normally do. And I don't. I don't normally use the pencil. One of the other things that I do that a lot of people look at me and go, why do you do that? I've got a fairly pronounced Cupid's bow. I happen to like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way the lipstick looks when I use it as a guideline. Yes, I'm old-fashioned. Get over it. Let's see. Where did that pencil go that I was looking for? All of my stuff is... See, this is one of the other problems with not wearing my glasses. Is you can't see nothing. No, I am not going necessarily for ombre lips. Even though it comes out that way to start with. Because I've got a red and an orange on there. Now this is another one of those sample things. This is a Lord and Berry Maxi Matte Crayon. Color is called Here and Now. There's the sample on the end of the stick. So I've got this red first and then this orange, which is kind of a brown orange. And then I've got some basic elf lip lacquer. Just enough to make them a little shiny. No, I am not worried about whether or not it looks ombre once I go to start taking the stills for the thumbnail and all that other stuff. I'm just not that worried. The only thing I'm worried about right now is untangling my earrings. Yes, you have seen the other earrings in the ears off and on because, yeah, I am trying to stretch my ears just a little bit because I have a problem with a lot of the earrings that I have are inexpensive and it's inexpensive metal kind of like these I mean I got these at Walmart for five bucks 
kind of thing because it was in the Halloween section. And you're not always getting the highest quality metal with that. So I'm doing a little bit of stretching on the ears so I can put some small tunnels in so I can use the small tunnels to protect the skin on my ears from the cheap metal. And I've got, I've done the first stretch on the lower holes. I got that one started and I'm up to what most people consider the first real stretch, which is the 14 gauge. And I've got the upper holes pretty much holding space with the 16 gauge that I've been wearing in the lower holes for quite a while, those the, the big silver discs. That's just the screw ends for the post. The 14 does not have a complete pass through tunnel. You have to get up to about 12 before you really start getting complete pass through tunnels that will take small wires and very fine posts. So, there's my spiders. And that's the tutorial, and that's the look. Now, like I said, I get these. I, I, I spot pretty palettes online, in the store. Sometimes it's a brand I've never heard of. If the cost is low enough, I'll take a shot, do a skin test. Otherwise, I leave them away. I did that with the Delanceys that I picked up, that I did the other vids with not so long ago. I skin tested them. I'd never had a Delancey palette before. Tell me what you think. Go out and play. It's fall. The weather's interesting. Put your favorite sweater on and go roll in the leaves and then spend hours watching a movie and picking the leaves out of your sweater. Be good. Mm -hmm.